What's going on you guys? Yo Sefer here. This is my weekly trading recap video. I'm going to discuss the trades I took last week uh, from the 4th to the 8th. Uh, sad to say it was a losing week for me. Lost 2900 bucks, so gave back some of my profits from last month. Not a good start to the month, but I am optimistic that I will be able to uh, turn it around and close out the month green. Uh, we'll, be, we'll be able to see that. I do have a, a really big active trade right now that is going into next week that I really hope works out because if it does, it's going to be, uh, it's going to set me up very nicely for the month. So, uh, but yeah, just kind of to discuss what happened this week. Um, kind of hard to imagine. I lost money this week, right? With the election pump, right? After the election results, the Trump pump, right? Uh, a lot of things were taken off. Um, but unfortunately I couldn't really participate too much because as you know, I do work seven days a week, 10 hour shifts and, uh, a lot of time I just can't find time to come to the computer and do anything because I'm either helping customers, dealing with my team, making orders, doing a lot of different things. So it's been exhausting and it's a little frustrating. Um, but yeah, I'll just kind of run through the stats here. You can see I've got my my uh, my uh, spreadsheet out here tracking all my results. So now 29, starting the month down 2,900, down 29 on the week, puts my all-time profit since tracking my stats which started at the beginning of last month. So all of last month till now, it's been 3,500 in profit so far. That's after this loss. Uh, we were up 6,400 last month, but uh, gave back some profits this week. So hopefully we can turn that around. We still have three more weeks of the month. Uh, started the week with a balance on my trading account, uh, 14,115. Now back down to 11,215. 20% loss on the week. You can see my total winners all-time winners, uh, 86. All-time losers, 16. Total trades, 102. Puts me at an 84.3% win rate. And you can see here, starting uh, starting the new month here on the 4th, uh, started pretty hot, man. Uh, on the 4th, not a single losing trade. All just a bunch of little day trade scalps. Did pretty good. Was good. But then you can see uh, on the 5th, closed out a big loser here. Uh, actually on the 6th during the, well, it was on the pre-market session of the 6th, but yeah, um, big loser on Palantir just didn't work out for me. You can see here, this is the closing order, thousand shares, uh, closed it and yeah, it wasn't really good at all. Um, did make a little bit of that back. I had a winner on Palantir where I grabbed 918 shares, took it long and you can see sold them for a little bit of a profit. You see right here. Uh, let me get this. Yeah, you can see right here, uh, you know, 5306 sold at 5372. But this big loser at a thousand shares right here uh, closed them, closed my short at 53, where I was initiating stuff at 49, 50, 51, and I was just averaging into a short position. I thought the the 50s was going to be kind of a a shakeout zone real quick, where it would go to 50, maybe 51, and then reverse down back down to like 49 or 48 before you know, reversing again to the upside. So I was looking for just a quick, a quick dip, but it never happened. It never came back down to previous zones. It kept setting newer zones, newer zones and closed off the week really strong. If we look at the chart on Palantir, I mean, wow, just ripping higher and higher and higher. And yeah, this is where on the fifth, as we were pumping, I started initiating shorts and you can see just, just kept on going. I closed it the following morning at 53 bucks, but, um, at least I hopped back in and got got four hundred ninety six dollars back on that long trade on Palantir. Then I had a, uh, several other day trade winners. It was looking good. It was looking really good, uh, but then gave back seven hundred bucks on Coinbase, uh, shorting the the shares. It took off on me. Uh, closed them out at a loser. Then you know was winning quite a bit of money back. You can see here just winning quite a bit of money back here. Just bang 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 bang. And then um, you can see right here, uh, big loser taking square into earnings. If we look at the chart, I was I was betting that the stock was going to spike on earnings because they were uh, if just based on the chart. We had pump, we had kind of broken this zone here. If I draw a line here, uh, we we were above that. Okay, and. I don't know, man. I just felt like there was some room for the upside on earnings to maybe spike a little bit higher real quick, and it just didn't happen. 
Um, again, I, I, a little frustrating week because I don't get a whole lot of time to prepare my setups and to, to, to kind of, you know, do my market analysis, set up levels, read the, you know, read the, the news alerts and things like that. I work seven days a week, 10 hour shifts. This is why I trade credit spreads, right? Because it, it favors a person like me. It's very passive. I don't care about really kind of any entry. In, uh, you know, intraday movements provided we're staying below or above the level that I specified. That's it. But with these types of directional trades, such as day trades or, you know, uh, day trades of options or day trades of equity, it's pre purely directional. That's all it is. You got to get the direction right. You got to be there to manage it. You got to do everything right. And so that's why I trade credit spreads. So as you know from the last video, I mentioned I won't be doing very many credit spreads this week due to the heightened volatility. Generally, you don't want to be trading credit spreads when it's when there's a ton of volatility. You just don't. You want to trade during normal weeks, you know. And so um, I did do two spreads, though, this week. Uh, I had a winner on Ultra Beauty Inc. You can see here, 206 and then uh, 471. And then on Lululemon, had a put spread that I sold. Collected 265 on that one. So, you know, and then I did buy some debit spreads on Netflix and uh, bagged winners on those. But then as soon as I try to do like some some other, you know, earnings type of plays, didn't work out. And honestly, I really don't play earnings as a buyer, man. You guys know that. If you've been watching my last couple of videos, you know, on my weekly recaps, you can see some earnings plays I've done. But I'm a net seller of options during earnings because the IV is so high and everything like that. And I pick my level and usually it works out for me. But as the, these plays, I was a buyer. I was a buyer of equity and a buyer of options here on DraftKings. And they both turned out to be losers. I normally don't do that. But I kind of, I don't know, I was reminded of my past where I used to do that, you know, back like several years back. I used to kind of play earnings that way. And it never really worked out the way I wanted it to. And I had an acquaintance who I knew who was in the market also during that time. And we were kind of like, did some plays together and you know we lost right um i recently uh uh got in touch with that person and we we went ahead and you know had a few beers and kind of caught up and i said hey how's things been going for you haven't talked to him in a long time but i reacquainted just to you know say hey you know what's going on how things been they're still doing the same thing risky earnings plays blowing money in fact they blew their whole account and that's kind of rubbed off on me, man. I, I don't want to make excuses, but when you have a close, really a close friend who's a, a, a long, long time acquaintance from the past that you're in the market with and you guys are doing, making plays together. And even though they're not working out, it's kind of like, oh, we're in this together, right? This was, I'm talking like four years back. Okay. Four, four three or four years back. And it never worked out. And so I kind of broke free from that. And I've been doing my own thing and it's been working out, you know, been winning, been winning, been trading spreads, been doing, doing great. I hang out with them. He tells me how he's doing these earnings plays, losing, busting his account. He's throwing up Hail Marys. And sure enough, it just kind of brought me back to that point in my life that I don't want to ever go back to that I was at where I did do risky earnings plays. And shame to say, but I, I tried that this week and sure enough, both of them were losers, you know. I'm betting, I'm betting that Square is going to go up on earnings through equity, trying to sell it right away on the quick pump on earnings. It does the exact opposite, you know. And then uh, I play post earnings on DraftKings. It starts pumping after this drop. I think it's going to pump above uh, $41 again after this pullback. I'm like, okay, it's going to go back above $41. It's going to close out strong. And I was wrong there too. And just Hail Marys, I don't trade like that anymore. I don't know why I did that this week. So sure enough, if you add those two losers at the end of the week, that's responsible for me losing this week. Uh, you know, even even with the, the loss on Palantir early in the week, when you add up all my other trades, I was up on the week. I was up. You know, even when with that big $3,200 $3, loss, you add up everything else, all of these and it puts me up, but then again, when you when you take this this right here and these these two right here, just just sabotaged my week, man. So and they were both risky kind of earnings ish plays, and you know, like I said, just hanging out with this old acquaintance who's who uh, you know I used to do stuff like that with that person, and um, they're still doing that, man, and they're busting their account pretty much. That's what he said. He pretty much went uh, on Clover Health. Uh, for earnings clover health you can see 
basically went all in with his like he's like i'm all in with my last bullet man and sure enough look what happened man just boom just down so and he's betting long on it uh, for earnings with heightened uh, implied volatility options are super expensive you guys know i don't do that stuff you know but i did it this week and i i I guess old acquaintances can rub off on you, you know, so I'm kind of trying to distance myself from that, and um, that's pretty much it. That's really all I have to say. I'm not really going to do any trade breakdowns because most of it was quick day trade scalps. There's not much to really talk about there, and I don't really want to relive these losers here. Um, you know, all I can say is um, I don't, I didn't have enough time to really, you know, kind of do my TA and DD and really make proper decisions this week with all the heightened volatility. I don't get a lot of time to trade anyway, and because I couldn't trade credit spreads, I was limited to to you know the day trades. But then I guess out of frustration, I just hopped into some risky, risky earnings plays, which is so stupid. If I would have just done my day trades, like I said, even with my loser on Palantir, I would have still ended the week in the green. So um, whatever, you know, you live and you learn. Uh, but yeah, I'm gonna definitely get away from that again. No more risky earnings plays. I do have an active trade right now that's open. I'm not going to disclose what it is until the results come in uh, next week. So definitely tune in for my next week's recap video. Uh, it's a big trade, man. I got a lot riding on this, and I, um, it could turn the whole week around and set me up very nicely for the month. So that's pretty much it for now, guys. The lesson learned here is don't overtrade if you don't have to. And... Um, Basically, if you, you know, if you have old acquaintances that kind of steer you the wrong way in the market and things like that, or maybe make you do some things you wouldn't do on your own, like take on too much risk, just, you know, stay away from that stuff, you know, stay away from folks like that, because that's not a sustainable way to trade. It is not a sustainable way to trade, to try to be playing earnings constantly and as a buyer, as a buyer, and try to win on earnings. It's just not a sustainable way to trade, in my opinion. So stay away from anyone who's trying to steer you towards overly risky things. You know, as you know, I'm, that's not me. I talk about low risk credit spreads, uh, you know, passive kind of trading. And sure enough, it's been rewarding. Um, but this week, because I didn't trade mostly spreads, uh, just had, you know, these last two trades is really what, what, what made the week negative for me. If I wouldn't have done these last two, would have been the green week. But other than that, guys, tune in next week. Big trade results coming up for next week. Uh, till, I wish you guys all the best in your trading. Hope it's going great for you guys. And I hope you had time to benefit from the Trump pump this week. It was a great week for traders. You know, if you have the time to get in there, man, it, it must have been good. So let me know in the comments how you guys did, how your trading was. Till next time, stay safe. Take care.